Another group of GIT drugs that we are going to discuss are the appetite stimulating drugs or the appetite stimulants. We use appetite stimulants. We use appetite stimulants for anorexic animals that do not respond for coaxing with small amounts of palatable foods. We are also using appetite stimulants for uh, during drug therapy to stimulate the appetite of the animal. These are the major groups of drugs that are considered to be appetite stimulants. We have the serotonin antagonist slash antihistamines. We also have the benzodiazepines, the progestines, and the glucocorticoids or the corticosteroids. So we are going to start with serotonin antagonist slash antihistamines. So uh, this, the drug under this, has two main effects. Now it blocks histamine, so it is an antihistamine drug, and it also blocks the serotonin receptor. So the drug under this is the ceproheptadine, brand name is periactin. So periactin or ceproheptadine has two major effects. So it, it appears to exert its antihistamine and antiserotonin effects by competing with free histamine and serotonin for binding at their respective receptors. So Ceproheptadine is classified as an H1 antihistamine because it blocks the H1 receptor uh, and it also blocks the serotoninergic receptor. So the antagonism of the serotonin on the appetite center of the hypothalamus now may account for ceproheptadine's ability to stimulate the appetite. So basically, the serotoninergic receptor is the receptor that mediates the normal control of satiety, satiety or fullness. So ceproheptadine is an appetite stimulant in cats as well as in dogs. It is also used for treating equine Cushing disease and serotonin syndrome in small animals. Conditions that are response not to uh, ceproheptadine in equine or older equids is the equine cushings or the PPID, the pars intermedia, uh, the pituitary pars intermedia dysfunction. So when we say pituitary pars intermedia dysfunction, it is an age-related endocrine disorder common in older equids. It is an endocrine disorder because it involves endocrine organs, the dysfunction of the pars intermedia of the pituitary gland as well as the uh, adrenal gland. So basically, you now in the PPID, so this is the, the normal and this is the uh, HPA axis. Now the HPA axis, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis with PPID. So PPID is caused by the degeneration of the neurons that affect the production of hormones such as the ACTH or the adrenocorticotropic hormone. So the common clinical signs include a long curly hair coat, delayed shedding, loss of muscle, poor immune function, and laminitis. So in the PPID or the pituitary pars intermediate dysfunction, now there is the absence of a negative feedback which controls the production of the hormone coming from the anterior pituitary as well as the um, adrenal gland. In this, uh, in the PPID again, no, there is this absence of that negative feedback so that there is overproduction of the hormones such as the ACTH and the cortisol. Group of appetite stimulant drugs are the benzodiazepines. So benzodiazepines are effective and, uh, appetite stimulants in cats but not in dogs by induction of GABA or the gamma amino butyric acid and by central inhibition of the satiety center in the hypothalamus. Of course, we have to remember that benzodiazepines um, are not only appetite stimulants, but they are mainly used as a sedative drug. They are also used as anxiolytic, anticonvulsant, with minor cardiovascular and respiratory uh, effects. They can be used as part of the anesthetic induction protocol for balanced anesthesia, with analgesic drugs to enhance patient comfort and sedation, as well as treatment of status epilepticus. So the most uh, commonly used benzodiazepine in veterinary medicine is diazepam. And of course, we have here you know, the vol volume as its uh, brand name. Uh, 
Diazepam is considered to be a more effective appetite stimulant but also has you know, a greater sedative effect than oxazepam. So the oxazepam is actually you know, a metabolite of the diazepam. And again, it can be given orally to cats. So these drugs, the uh, diazepam and oxazepam as an appetite stimulant you know, are more effective you know, for in cats you know, than in dogs. Of course, we also have the progestins. So basically, when we say progestins, now it is a natural or a synthetic form of the steroid hormone progesterone. Of course, we have to know that progesterone is the major hormone that maintains pregnancy and prevents further ovulation during pregnancy. So the drug under this is the magistral acetate. And magistral acetate is a synthetic progestin that has a significant anti-estrogen and glucocorticoid activity, which results in adrenal suppression. So, of course, pag sinabi natin anti-estrogens, these are, um, again, these are group of drugs now that are, of course, estrogen antagonists or estrogen blockers. So, they prevent estrogens like, for example, estradiol from mediating their biological effects in the body. So, for example, now they prevent uh, ovulation, which is a function of estrogen. It is used to stimulate appetite and promote weight gain in anorectic cats and dogs. Since this steroid uh, drug, uh, magistral acetate, has a glucocorticoid activity, so it will promote weight gain in cats and dogs. It is contraindicated in pregnant animals and in animals with uterine disease, uh, diabetes mellitus, or mammary neoplasia. So, of course, one of the effects of the steroid hormone is it has a glucocorticoid activity and glucocorticoid can induce, uh, it can produce increase in blood sugar you know, or hyperglycemia. That is why it is contraindicated in diabetes mellitus. Side effects include behavioral change, endometritis, and mammary enlargement. Another appetite stimulant drugs are the glucocorticoids, also known as corticosteroids. So glucocorticoids are frequently employed as appetite stimulants in steak or debilitated animals. For its MOA, its uh, appetite stimulant uh, activity is considered to be unknown, and this has been attributed uh, to euphoria. Euphoria is the increased feeling of well-being produced by glucocorticoids. The activity is also in part as a re result of its anti-inflammatory actions. Of course, um, aside from its appetite stimulant property, the glucocorticoids are also used as anti-inflammatory drugs or painkillers um, along with, for example, the NSAIDs or the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. For the therapeutic uses of glucocorticoids, so they are used as a non-specific short-term therapy for appetite stimulation. Small animals, the glucocorticoids that are used are prednisolone and prednisone. This is given once every other day. For large animals, we have the prednisolone or dexamethasone, which is given IM once a day. For the adverse effects of glucocorticoids, of course, they are immunosuppressive and may delay recovery from underlying disease. Another uh, important adverse effects of glucocorticoids is that they decrease you know, the gastric mucus production uh, after you know, the administration. And gastric ulcers may develop with high dose or long-term use or in animals with pre-existing gastric mucosal disease if present. The effect of glucocorticoids is that it can increase gluconeogenesis. Now. So pag na, uh, when we say gluconeogenesis, that is the synthesis of new glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. And we also have uh, an antagonistic effect to insulin. So it antagonizes insulin, and insulin is important to regulate the blood sugar. So it can result in hyperglycemia or diabetes mellitus. Uh, glucocorticoids such as prednisone, Simulates steroid inducing euphoria, which in turn simulates appetite. Again, the, this uh, euphoria is the uh, this is you now the mechanism whereby glucocorticoids induces uh, appetite stimulation. 
So the side effects of glucocorticoids in, uh, include those that are the same with the diabetes mellitus. So there is polydipsia or increase in thirst, polyuria, dull hair coat, weight gain, and behavioral changes. So these are the pharmacological effects and the adverse effects of glucocorticoids. So the exogenous corticosteroids will suppress the endogenous cortisol secretion. So this is true when we are going to use you know, the corticosteroid for a long-term you know, or chronic-term use. Uh, another is in the carbohydrate metabolism. So it can induce glycogenolysis you know, or the breakdown of glycogen, for example, in the liver, gluconeogenesis or the uh, synthesis of new glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. So, of course, this can in, um, induce you know, hyperglycemia and iatrogenic diabetes. So, when we say iatrogenic diabetes, that is mainly due, that is a type of diabetes that is mainly due to the administration of drugs such as corticosteroids. For the fat metabolism, so it promotes redistribution of fat. So another very important adverse effects of glucocorticoids are, of course, it, uh, it is an immunosuppressive agent. You know, it uh, suppresses the immune system and it delays wound healing. It also increases the susceptibility to fungal infections and tuberculosis you know, in humans. So these are the mechanisms whereby uh, steroid hormones induces immunosuppression and these other adverse effects. So for example, it will decrease you know, the prostaglandin synthesis. Of course, the MOA of glucocorticoids, one of its MOA is that it will inhibit the phospholipase A2 enzyme so that it will cause you know, the uh, decrease you know, in the production of prostaglandins. It also uh, promotes the T cell destruction you know, and induces immune suppression, anti-allergic action, and decreased itching.